All right, motherfuckers. That was fucking imperishable right there, man. For that, we did Enthian. And uh, after the interview, we'll play some Nile. But uh, let's call fucking uh, Brian up right now and see what the fuck is going on in his world, man. What's up, man? Hello, Brian. Hey, how's it going, man? Dude, man, what the fuck is going on? Oh, nothing much. Just uh, <laughs> sitting around playing a little guitar. Hell yeah, dude. Well, fucking, uh, we were just listening to you fucking shredding it up on uh, the brand new track from uh, Imperishable Exclusion. Right yeah, dude, man, that, fuck, dude, fucking turn it up, man. <laughs> well, thank you. Hell yeah. So, uh, so tell us what's going on in your world, man. Uh, well, I stay pretty busy. Um, I, uh, well, you know, with COVID and everything, I guess music is, uh, slowed down as far as live acts, but, um, yeah, I mean, I stay busy. I've got, um, you know, a wife and kids and, uh, a dog and bills <laughs> and, uh, a normal life, you right, know? Right. Yeah. Yeah, but try to stay active, you know. How are things in, uh, where do you, where do you live? Tennessee? Tennessee, man. Yeah, cool. Yeah, same, same here, dude. Same fucking here, man. Yeah. Just you got, to... you guys on lockdown up there? Uh, no, no, not anymore. They, they let us go back to work, but, I mean, it's, you know, it's still pretty much, you know, it's, you're limited on what you can do. I know the feeling. Speaking of that, like, uh, I mean, fucking Nile, you guys released that record, like, just last year, like, right before this whole fucking, uh, shit fucking went down, right? Yeah, um, we, we spent a lot of time, uh, writing and tracking the whole thing and, uh, getting it all right, you know, like you have to do in, in 2020, and, you know, did a couple tours and, uh, you know, the shit show of 2020 happened and, you know, we canceled all kinds of shit, just like everybody else, festivals and, um, Australia, Japan, uh, we were gonna, I was supposed to be on tour right now, actually with Nile doing Canada and North America and Mexico yet again. Um, but all that's canceled. So uh, wait until next year. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, that was that was a definitely a killer fucking record too, man. Um, well, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, your your addition to the band was definitely fucking uh, heard. Like, I mean, uh, it's it was a good thing too. I, <laughs> I know a lot of people were kind of like on the fence, you know, wondering, you know, is it gonna be the same? Is it gonna be better? You know, but I thought I fucking loved it, man. I thought it was great. Well, I mean. It, you know, I mean that's that's it's all subjective, really. But I mean, the reality of that situation is that you know you have a band that has an established sound, and uh, when a member leaves that's been there for a long time, of course it's going to be met with a little bit of yeah resistance and skepticism, you know. But um. But, I mean, I like to think that Brad and I are there because, uh, you know, because we deserve to be as far as our work ethic and, um, you know, what we bring to the table. I think that, uh, yeah, we're not slouches. I'll put it that way. <laughs> well, I, and you know what? Uh, earlier when I was listening to Enthian, I was kind of thinking in my head that it's sort of uh, the, there was something in the sound of the guitar and and what you were doing that kind of made me feel like you know what this just sort of fits in with what Nile does so it just sort of makes sense yeah Enthian Enthian was kind of a different uh, monster it was very much um, the songs on that Enthian record were written Jesus Christ almost 10 years ago at this point so um, as musicians, I think everybody from that band has evolved, but uh, especially from a songwriting point of view. But uh, the, actually, Enthian is has dissolved. Um, it's not really a thing anymore. Um, 
but that's a, another story. You know, I'm not going to write a book on that. <laughs> well, tell us, tell us about Imperishable, man. So, what, what's uh, what's the plan with this? Well, um, first and foremost, it's really just a a side project. Um, Nile is still the main gig uh, with Imperishable. I mean, I really don't have many plans to uh, to tour and go out and play shows because I do enough of that with Nile. Um, it, it it was really kind of. Uh, just an outlet for ideas that I kind of had laying around. I mean, I'm always writing and tracking different ideas. And, you know, after collecting them for years and some of the riffs didn't really belong uh, in it, with Nile, you know. I mean, Nile has a certain sound. Mm-hmm. Uh, but some of the stuff that I was kind of coming up with and collecting was, you know, it seemed like something different so uh, i figured you know what the fuck why not uh put some stuff together and um you know see where it goes you know see how many uh different songs i can get i mean it's 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 certainly different it's a little more black i guess in a way it's a little more black metal oh yeah man was fucking badass dude well thank you from what i've heard so far anyway uh so so uh as far as um uh, well as far as Nile like what's coming next for 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 you guys with that That's um that's a great question because <laughs> I mean like I, like I said I mean we we're supposed to be on tour right now Um so for the net, for the rest of the year the rest of the year's fucked obviously and um next year uh, you know, I know there's some festivals planned, and I know there was another tour planned, but I think that not many bands can answer that question. Um, you know, <laughs> when, when you know when you got a new record out, I mean, you need to be promoting it, and uh, we can't do that, and nobody else can really do that. You know, the best promotion is a live show um, and yeah. touring. I mean, that's how. You know, that's how bands make a living nowadays. Um, so I think that everybody's kind of involved in, um, you know, doing some other music because we all worked our asses off on that record. And, uh, you know, need to get some other things out of our system. I mean, Carl's working on his solo project and George has a... Uh, a fusion project and a couple other session things to do and um brad is uh has another project with zyl so i mean everybody's staying busy and i think that you know we're collecting ideas for for another record as well um yeah whenever that endeavor you know whenever we decide to embark on that endeavor oh yeah yeah, well, I definitely, uh, we, I know we all definitely hope to fucking uh, see you guys back on the road someday for sure, man. Fucking, uh, I saw Nile many, many years ago in a little dive bar. I think it was in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, God damn, man, it was fucking badass though. Like I was standing right in front of uh, Carl's fucking amps. No. <laughs> and it was so fucking loud, dude. It was like almost like you you could almost feel it about to blow you down. Like it was fucking the air moving out of the fucking speakers. You could feel it, dude. It yeah. Like, well, I mean, the thing about <laughs> the uh, the touring death metal guitar, heavy metal guitar players is that over the years their amps get louder mm-hmm. because they they get deafer and the shit's got to be louder <laughs> and louder and louder. Yeah, it's but uh, really, I I I don't really need to hear my guitar so much as my vocals. I've got to hear my vocals. Um, I know what my hands are doing. You know, it's nice to hear it, but uh, the voice, man. If if vocalists know, like, if you have to push too hard for a few nights, you're gonna fuck your voice up, and you got a, another show to do the next night, and the next night, and the next, you know, so. I gotta hear my voice. Anyway, anyway, that's. <laughs> oh yeah, 
Well, I got some uh, I got some questions for you coming in from the listeners. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Lady, it up. Lady Red wants to know: Have you guys ever played in Canada? Uh, I haven't. Um, but Nile played in Canada. Oh Jesus! I want to say 2014. It was Brad's first tour with a band. Um, no, it, it was his first tour, but he wasn't playing in a band yet. He was like doing lights or something. He was, you know, we bring some people on the road. Um, so yes, Nile has done a tour in Canada. Uh. Uh, of course, I don't know how many times, but it's been some years. Uh, and we were planning on being there, you know, right now. But the world is, uh, the apocalypse happened. <laughs> All right, another question. Uh, JMCT wants to know, what's more fun, a big venue or a dive bar? Um. Well, of course, you know, the intimacy of uh, of a small bar is great. Um, it, it, it's just such a different vibe. I've been asked before about the massive festivals versus small club, and it's they're really two different things. Uh, you know, the huge clubs is, is nice when a lot of people are there and you can see a lot of people... Um, but if you play a badass club and there's not a lot of people there, it, it kind of uh, that's not very fun. Um, the the other thing too about I'll say this I'll say that when you play a big um, massive stage in a big club, you know the farther apart from your bandmates that you are, the harder it is to hear because. It takes sound so long to travel to your ear, um, and when you're playing really fast music, you're actually tighter as a band when you're really close to each other. Um, so I don't, uh, you know, I'm digressing like a motherfucker, but I don't really know how to answer that question because I enjoy oh. both. Yeah, that makes sense, man. Amazing. Yeah, it, it, it's you don't really think about it until you start doing it, and when you play these little tiny stages and you're cramped and you're mm -hmm. sweating and you know when you get done with the show you're like man we were tight tonight and it's like well yeah we were like really close to each other I mean you're right on top of each other you know exactly where that downbeat is, um, but then again the big clubs are nice because they have badass monitors and. You know, a nice PA and uh, usually good catering and et cetera. Right on. Another question: uh, What's the craziest thing that, that's happened at a show? Um, man, I don't. Uh, oh God, I don't know. That's that's a hard one. Somebody threw a shoe at me one time. Uh, <laughs> Uh, let me think. Uh, there was a there was a cat that I can't remember his name. He comes to a lot of the shows in Denver, but uh, his friend had passed away, and he brought his friend's ashes and wanted us to scatter them on stage and play on his friend's ashes. Um, we declined. Uh, I don't know. You know, it all kind of blurs together, man. Uh, Carl's got some pretty incredible stories about that. Um, yeah, that's about all I got. People have thrown food on stage. <laughs> uh, you know, but, I mean, security is kind of, you know, it's different than it was, like, 15 years ago. I don't think shows are as violent as they used to be. People don't get on stage as much as they used to. You, you know what I mean? I mean, I think the whole Dimebag Daryl yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it kind of changed stuff, man. So that not as much crazy shit happens, really. You know, other than throwing stuff. or You get some hecklers sometimes, but that never works at a metal show because we're louder than you. We can, you know, yeah. we can silence you. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, yeah. I remember uh, it wasn't not not long after Dimebag uh, was murdered. 
I was at a clutch show and I had a fucking Pantera shirt on and like a dumbass I tried to fucking stage dive and I was uh, climbing uh, up on the fucking thing and the security they came and grabbed me and they fucking threw my ass out to the fucking curb man no questions asked I was like yeah Fuck. well you know but, I think that that kind of that incident alone yeah changed you know a, a, a lot of stuff you know and that's for good reason I mean I mean, nowadays, I mean, you, you never know, you know, somebody jumps on stage. I mean, I've, I've had people that, uh, you know, not even intentionally, but just get too close to stage with like a couple beers and they end up spilling shit all over your pedal board. You know, that's, yeah. um, you know, you never know what's going to happen really night, night from night. Oh, yeah. All right, another question from the uh, listeners. Vicky wants to know, what do you prefer better, uh, bubble baths or showers? Vicky, I prefer showers <laughs> for sure. Uh, bubble baths, no, th- that takes too much time. I'm a pretty impatient person. Yeah, I want to get in there and wash up and get the fuck out. Another question, uh, what's your favorite drink? Ooh. Uh, you know, I guess I, I don't in particular have one. My favorite beer is Franza Skyner. I'll say that. Franz is that the question? What's my favorite, like, alcoholic drink? Yeah, probably. Uh, we'll go with that. We'll go with Franza Skyner. It's this amazing German beer from Munich, I want to say. Oh, my God, I could brush my teeth with that shit. <laughs> so, it's good, man. It's good shit. Fuck yeah, man. Uh, it, now, as far as uh, as far as you, man, like growing up, um, what were some of your influences that got you into playing music? That uh... <laughs> oh boy, how much how much time you got? <laughs> uh, well, um, my father was a musician. Um, my father, my uncle on my mother's side, guitar player. My mother sang and stuff. But my my father was a bass player, guitar player, singer for blues rock type bands growing up. Which actually, years later, we ended up playing in a blues band together, which was cool. But um, so I kind of grew up on all that old '60s and '70s music: um, the Beatles, Zeppelin, the Who. Kansas, Jethro Tull, Rush, even some of the progressive stuff like uh, Return to Forever, Dixie Dregs, you know, that list goes on and on and on. But then um, I guess around, you know, the 90s, I kind of grew up in the 90s. And as a kid, I remember hearing like Nirvana and Alice in Chains. And that's initially where I picked up the guitar. Um, but that, that shit didn't last long. I discovered Metallica. Uh, and Justice for All, which was, you know, a uh, God, I learned that entire record by ear. Um, you know, all those old classic thrash bands, I, I discovered all that, you know, Metallica and Slayer and Pantera. I love Pantera as well. Uh, um, let's see. I mean, the list goes on and on. And then. I mean, see, there's there's different lists. Like, there's a there's a breaking point of uh, I could split it into bands that have inspired me to write the music that I write, and then there are musicians who inspire me to better my craft. Right. So, um, musicians, you know, guitar nerd stuff like Ingve Malmsteen and. Joe Satriani, I, I studied classical for a little while, so Andre Segovia, and um, even blues guys like Stevie Ray Vaughan, and, uh, you know, Dimebag, and, I mean, gee, that list goes on and on, because there's always a better guitar player out there than you. Eddie Van Halen, rest in peace, um, is another one. Yeah. But, uh, that list goes on and on, and eventually you got to get kind of sick of working on your picking technique and chops, and you know people don't want to hear that shit. So you got to write songs. So um, I guess like the bands th- that influence me the most, as far as metal or uh, like Emperor, um, 
Morbid Angel. Uh, I've recently kind of gotten into more obituary. I never, I was never a huge obituary fan until I saw them live. Oh yeah, yeah. And it was like, holy shit, these riffs are so powerful. <laughs> um, you know, you can't like stop headbanging. It's so groovy. So, uh, obituary, and there's there's other bands like the the ferocity of like Angel Corpse. Which you know they're a pretty short-lived band, but man, they had some great material. Um, there's another band called The Legion that was very short-lived, which people aren't very familiar with. Um, that great stuff. Uh, I mean, you know that list goes on and on as well. I mean, all the a lot of the classic death metal and black metal. I mean, I love a lot of that stuff. You know, I, I'm a little more old school with it, I guess, because I don't really have as much time to check out bands anymore as I used to. Um, so, I, you know, I'm getting old. But, you know, I'm fucking old, man. I I listen to old shit, mostly. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, for, speaking of uh, of guitar, man, for all the gearheads out there, that are uh, wondering, can you give us a rundown of like some of your equipment that you're using to get your tone? Yeah, well, uh, guitar-wise, I'm using Karelian guitars. Uh, they're English-made guitars, and Chris is the man. He hand-builds them all. I use those, and uh, he also actually hooked me up with um, bare-knuckle pickups. He, he kind of introduced me to a rep, and... Uh, uh, I endorse their products. So I'm using um, the Karelian guitar with, let's see, this one's got, well, Warpig um, pickups. Let's see, my, uh, my my rig at home, I'm using like a Mesa speaker, but playing a Nile. Um, they're Carl speakers, and it's all Marshall, which sound fantastic, you know. And generally speaking, I'm using... Uh, Used in Axe Effects a lot, just because they're so easy to use. Um, you know, the, I know there's a big debate over digital and tube amps, and yes, tube amps are far superior to the digital. But the fact of the matter is that when you're playing death metal with a drummer that's blasting at 260, and you have two guitar players competing for the same frequency space. And you're playing in a club with sound bouncing off the walls. Your game structure does not matter that much. Um, so yeah, Axe Effects, and I, I push it through a uh, a VHT two ninety two power amp, which is a a workhorse. I've had this thing fuck twelve years, and I had the tubes replaced just because I wanted to try something new. There wasn't anything wrong with them. But, uh, this amp is phenomenal. Um, aside from that, I mean, that's pretty much it. And I don't, you know, I don't, I don't get too crazy on gear. Hell yeah, man. Well, fucking, uh, I'm about out of questions for you. Is there anything else you want to let your fans know? Stay safe out there. No. I, not really. I'm just being stupid because I'm because <laughs> I'm tired. It's actually, dude. It's it's my bedtime. Like I wake up early, <laughs> have to go to work. But uh, um, as far as imperishable, you know, still kind of writing stuff. It's very much in the you know the early stages of whatever this project will be. Um, Probably going to put out another single at some point and uh, an EP, you know, shop it around and just uh, kind of have fun with it. You know, I, I'm not really, I'm not trying to like break any molds or something with this band. I'm, you know, we're writing music that, that we just want to write, you know, and that's, that's pretty much it. And if people enjoy it, cool. Um, I appreciate the support, obviously. But if people don't dig it, I really don't give a shit because I'm just writing it for myself. So, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna put some stuff out um, because that's what artists do. 
they, you know, we write music, man. We put stuff out. Hell yeah, dude. Right on, man. Well, before I let you go, can I get you to make us a station tag real quick? Sure. All right. Whenever you're ready, say something like, this is Brian from uh, Nile and Imperishable, and you're listening to Metal Devastation Radio. Okay. Ready? Yeah. This is Brian Kingsland from Nile and Imperishable, and you're listening to Metal Devastation Radio. Fuck yeah, dude. Right on, man. Right on. Cool. Well, hell yeah, man. Thanks a lot for taking the time to talk to us, dude. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to blast some fucking Nile for these motherfuckers so they can go crazy, all right? Right on. What song are you going to play? Uh, Vile Nilotic Rights. Cool. That's a, that's a solid one. <laughs> all right, man. We'll talk to you later, dude. All right. Peace, man. Cheers. There you have it, folks. Live on the Zach Moonshine Show with Metal Devastation Motherfucking Radio. Like I said earlier... Crank this fucking shit up loud as a fuck. Put your speakers in your fucking windows. Put them in your front lawns. Put them wherever the fuck you can. Make your fucking neighbors fucking hate you. If you don't fucking see you all trucks everywhere, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with you, man. Crank it up. This is Nile. <laughs>